Good morning. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dale Hall Thurman. This is the third in my series on promoting godly marriages uh, from personal independence to mutual interdependence. There's a bunch of things I think over the years I've seen uh, kind of a fly in the walls view of what we can do to promote godly marriages among believers in the church especially but I think there's a lot here that would also apply to people who don't have a commitment to Christ because marriage is a common good which has been given to uh, humanity human beings men and women since the very beginning and uh, even among people who don't follow Christ I've seen that a, a good marriage is a positive good in their life so uh, with that said uh, continuing onward um, I've heard myself many women since the 1970s and probably a little bit before aiming at being independent a trope of being a strong independent woman and I think that's been overdone in many of their, uh, their lives and way they've dealt with people dealt with situations in their lives you can almost see the wheels turning sometimes in some situations where they think I in this situation I have to be the strong and independent woman when actually there may have been much more appropriate behaviors in them rather than trying to shoot for that but uh, as we look this morning at this chapter Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 I think independence developing independence is even more crucial for the development of young men into adulthood. Here in Genesis is a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they will come one flesh. First thing, leaving his father and mother. And in fact this passage was quoted verbatim endorsed by Jesus Christ in the New Testament being applicable to people. So for a man who wants to get married, the first step before marriage is independence from his parents. And for women who are looking at men for marriage, look for those who have developed independence from their parents. And we'll get into that as we go on. There's uh, Each and every sentence means something. It's kind of a chain of sentences here, of course. So, And I think that it is, in our age, to some extent needed by women to be able to live independently during the time between the that they come of age in between the time that they uh, come as wife, however long that may be. In uh, years ago, uh, women usually wouldn't have to live independently for very long apart from anyone else. Uh, several of my aunts and uncles were married early. They lived on a farm and this is still common in, and it's always been common in rural communities, farming communities. for. A wife to be married to leave her parents home and go to the home of the um, husband without any ch time of being living on her own aside from the parents uh, my mother uh, was uh, did actually grow up on a farm and she did uh, spend some time independently from her parents but she had to go back and live with them until she did marry my father so there were some there's some problems with that trope even then and unfortunately our era has uh, put the Carrie Bradshaw sex in the city which goes back further all the way back to to uh, sex in the single girl the Helen Gurley Brown book to go to New York be a writer and eventually find a husband well that work happened for Helen Gurley Brown but um, a lot of women who have been trying to do that over the past few years are, showing, are really expressing their disappointment and believe that that was a scam. So I would say that uh, being able to live independently as a woman could be very helpful. I Sometimes I've seen it's looked like uh, living at home for extended periods may be detrimental to some women for their development as adults. So they may not be developing some of the types of skills and um, habits, capabilities that they would need to be able to live with a husband in a mutually satisfying marriage. And we need to note that I believe this did happen in years past. 
but it's not scriptural to raise girls to be trophy wives. I saw trophy wives back in the 1960s, 1970s. Um, they became lazy often. I had a Pentecostal grandmother that I worked with uh, some years ago, and she really lit, had some um, nasty things to say. Uh, she wasn't trying to be nasty about her uh, brother's wife, about how she became lazy, and she became addicted to pleasure and escapes. And that's what happened to housewives in the 1960s and 1970s. They became bored, lazy, and addicted to pleasure and escapes. Why do you think that there were so many that were hooked on soap operas and gossip? And they had no idea what it meant to really work diligently at home. And in years past, for well-to-do families, the pattern was for women who had the help, who had the maids and the cooks, etc., um, to be to uh, set themselves into uh, benevolent enterprises, they might have called them, to helping others, helping the poor, etc. There was a whole safety net that came from why uh, well-to-do wives who had a lot of time on their hands. So instead of trying to um, get it uh, um, caught up with uh, things, some some of them you know, even going further back. We, you know, you get caught up in the theater and stuff like that, so, you know, So, even then, the boredom came if they didn't look at what diligence would mean in their situation, what they could do with time on their hands. And independence, as we talk about it now, however crucial it may be to developing as an adult, it's more, never more than a step on the journey. It's not a final destination. I think that's part of the problem. The problem is the goal of being independent isn't really true to uh, human nature. Definitely not for some a social creature as we are. We live together. We are social people, human beings, or marital happiness. Independence can be a real problem where you have two independent people fighting to keep their independence in a marriage. And there's also something which I haven't really... It's well known in psychology, but the pop psychology, it's still not filtered down that well. Attachment theory. And we're made to attach to other people. Um, PTSD, um, the, the current version, long-term... Um, Stress from uh, being in an abusive relationship does really have strong detrimental effects to people's attachment. But I think that we haven't really realized how much we need to have the positive effects of attachment in our lives. And that's what we call mutual independence. Interdependence. Not independence, but interdependence. And that's the destination in the creation of God. Man shall be this father and mother, hold fast to his wife, they should become one flesh. At least this means mutual inter interdependence. To be able to be interdependent with others. And often that's not taught in families, uh, unfortunately. But uh, it is one of the real keys to a lasting marriage. I do have my extended family. People have been married for years, 60, 70 years or so. My parents were married for over 50. Uh, my grandparents were married for over 50. And uh, this is the goal. And the key is to overcome a family background, to understand and deviate from the patterns that you may have learned as growing up. Break out from the patterns and the problems of the past. And it may not only be just family background, but the social background, because we're brought into uh, the larger culture, to our sh schools, to the pop culture and the influences there. There's a whole undertow of those things which become familiar to us but draws away from the goal of true independence that becomes true interdependence. And there's some suggestions I have right now for preparations to be able to survive on one's own. And then from that, to be able to live and partner with other 
another adult with common goals and activities, which that's what a lot of marriage will be. And there's some guidance for preparation for full adulthood and maturity to go beyond adolescence, uh, extended adolescence, which seems to be rampant in our cultures, uh, at least since the 1990s. I don't know what happened before. Um, but uh, there are a number of suggestions. The first suggestion I have is one which you probably wouldn't think of first. But you need to learn to live with a sense of humor and cheerfulness. People who don't develop a sense of humor are really have a lot more difficulty, who aren't cheerful, who aren't able to look at a mistake and laugh about it if it isn't if it's just a minor thing uh, be able to get together and work with someone cheerfully to help to resolve mistakes and problems um, a malicious mockery of others and their failures humiliation of others for making mistakes someone who's a cutthroat competitor they usually don't make very good marital partners and they usually need to understand how detrimental that is and to be able to overcome that within their own lives to be able to have a strong, happy, and lasting marriage. And some of those signs can be a desperate urge to isolate, crush, punish, and humiliate people who differ from them. And that usually comes because of an extraordinary sense of arrogance, personal superiority, or seeing someone else's perceived threat or rival. God help them if that's the person they were married to or want to be married to. God help them. Because that's looking up for continuous conflict from the start. And I, sitting from where I am right now, I would say that their odds of divorce are greatly increased simply by that attitude. And it can be devastating in a marriage when this emerges from a person, especially after whirlwind courtship, love bombing, honeymoon period, and everything else I advise from here onward will be much easier if this is done. If people look to live with a sense of humor, a sense of cheer cheerfulness with whoever they may be living with. And the next one is something which is advised but I, from some sources, but I really don't see it advised that much. Learn how to understand and tolerate the common habits and characteristics of the opposite sex. Men need to understand women better and women need to understand men very better. And uh, too often we put too much of a burden on learning this from casual dates, from our dating life. But uh, that, that can be helpful itself. But uh, it's better to be a student of uh, the men in your life if you're a woman or the women in your life if you're a man for your own friends and relatives. You've got great, great examples right there. And if you don't have any, well, you can get some. And there are people who say it's impossible for men and women to be friends. Well, quoting the eminent authority of Harry from, from when Harry met Sally, that's not really true. If you look at history, that's not really true. And it, as we get to understand their common ways, common understanding, their characteristics, both good and bad, you know, and again, men and women aren't going to be all the same. That One man isn't going to be exactly the same as the other. Another woman is going to be exactly the same as another. There may be some, some common habits. There may be some radically different dispositions and capabilities that they have. But it's a good idea to understand the opposite sex. Uh, that was if one, of, one of the things I think that uh, the learning experience Mary Kate Danaher was played by Maureen O'Hara in the movie The Quiet Man. She learned that her husband, Sean Thornton, who was played by John Wayne, wasn't a weak man for trying to for deal with her brother's aggressiveness or cheating him and uh, the way that her brother treated him. He wasn't weak for wanting to avoid that, but he was actually very slow to anger, but because of the tragedy in his own life, because in his pro boxing career, he let his anger get in pro and he killed a good man. So, 
they were able to resolve that if you watch the movie for after uh, Sean Thornton talks it out with uh, Reverend Playfair, uh, played by Arthur Shields, and uh, <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't advise having a knockdown drag out fight like like uh, like Mary Kate Dan and her <laughs> like Sean Thornton had with uh, Mary Kate Dan, her brother, played by Victor McLaughlin, who. Actually, a very entertaining actor. He was an action star ever since the 1920s, and uh, he did his own stunts in some of the 1920s, but he became a very entertaining actor afterwards. But, again, understand the opposite sex. We don't start to ide overly idealize them or pathologize good things. But something I've heard too often is that women start to see men who are kind and courteous as weak. God, God help us if that become, happens with too many. I, because uh, Jesus, kind, courteous, but also the lion of the tribe of Judah. So, a Christian woman who sees that really isn't understanding the role of real kindness in a man's life, as well as self-control, etc., the fruit of the Spirit. And the same same would be a man um, meant one of the things, uh, if you don't understand the opposite sex pretty well, very well, you'll be you'll try to exploit the opposite sex. Men try to exploit, exploit women sexually. Women try to exploit uh, men financially. But uh, continuing onward with my list of suggestions here, um, learn some basics of cooking and food preparation. If you're a man or a woman, preparation for having a life at home. Whoever may need to take primary responsibility in the home after marriage, um, a lot of times that will be the wife, even nowadays. But it's a good thing for guys to learn it too. I lived off campus in college with a bunch of other Christian guys, and uh, some of us uh, learned how to cook uh, reasonably well coming there. Myself, because my mother went back to uh, work uh, when I was in high school and she leave instructions on how to start the um, how to start supper so I learned how to follow a recipe and uh, we generally worked together and uh, some of the guys that came there barely, really didn't know how to boil water one guy thought that if you just uh, put a pizza that they uh, had delivered into the oven that the oven would just automatically heat it up so um, there's things which uh, both men and women need to learn there Learn some basic home chores. Learn how to take care of whatever home you have, an apartment, a house. And if you want to do the home projects, uh, the kind of stuff we used to give you some basic skills with the shop class back when I was uh, back in, when I was in junior high. Uh, well, you, you can, a lot of women can learn how to use a hammer and electric drill if they want to. If they don't want to, that's fine. We don't want to force anyone to do stuff that they really, I don't want to do that. But uh, it's a good idea also to get some previous experience at home with uh, learning how to uh, cook and clean. Uh, I had some uh, graduate work. Actually, when I was in graduate school, I worked uh, housekeeping in a hospital as part of uh, paying the bills until I got my uh, Master of Divinity degree. And uh, so I learned how, to <laughs> learned how to clean with the graduate level expertise. So I was cleaning. Um, delivery rooms, operating rooms, uh, corridors, hallways, uh, stairways, and even the morgue. So, but those are some stories for another time. Also, learn respect for others. How to live with those who are different from you. And again, this is something in years past when guys and gals would need to get roommates of their same sex. Men and women men being roommates with men during the uh, years of low income and women with women, etc. way back then. And learning how to do that, you learn some things like respect for others' property, others' prosperity, letting that uh, if they continue to uh, uh, succeed, that that uh, means a lot for all of you. And learning how to ask for things before borrowing them. Uh, returning things in reasonable condition and getting compensation if they're broken or damaged, just to say, learning respect for others and daily living and learning how to live with those who are different. 
and learning respect also for the privacy of others, for matters which are not your business. If you interfere in the business of someone who's a male roommate, if you're a guy, um, you can get punched out. <laughs> so at the very least, you could have some problems there. So let others deal with their heartbreaks and embarrassments without making it worse. Certainly there's a real way, a real place to be compassionate, but you don't want to try to force compassion in that case. Let people disclose their own heartbreaks and embarrassments and help deal with them with real compassion. That's not weakness. That's being Jesus for them. And another, another one, learning respect for the schedules of others, being personally punctual, learning how, because people have all sorts of uh, demands upon their time, especially if they're keeping down a job that requires them to keep certain hours. So, enough said there. Learn to be functional, learn respect for others, learn that uh, in order to earn a living, they need to uh, be able to keep with those job hours, etc. And learning respect for the feelings of others and how to deal constructively with disagreement and conflict. One of the real problems in marriage is people come in with unfair fighting tactics. They may have learned those at home. Maybe they were permitted to take out their frustrations on a younger brother or sister. Or in their dating life, they um, dealt with, as it can happen, men dealing with a weaker woman or a woman looking for a weak man where they um, lash out in trivial defenses, even mild suggestions. Well, you might want to try that this way. Well, why are you? No. Okay, well, we could try that, but uh, I've tried that or something like that. Some of, something like that to uh, um, deal with a mild suggesting constructively and not like with a temper tantrum. And you learn things like not pushing others to go against their consciences and not seeing that you having a different opinion than others is a call to battle, to all out war. I'm saying all over the time, a lot of times uh, as evangelicals, we do not put out fatwas or engage in jihad, <laughs> especially not on the personal level. No personal jihads. If someone has a minor difference of opinion from with you, discuss it constructively. It may be uh, maybe you'll need to agree to disagree, which is possible. But uh, learning that respect is a part of learning how to deal with others, and learning how to share and explore the areas outside of which you're already familiar, which you already have in common, even things which scare you. And this is where friends of all types can really help help you, learning how to deal with them. Go with them in uh, situations which scare you, which uh, um, as long as you're certain they're not trying to, <laughs> to do, do something detrimental to you, not trying to trick you or something like that, but a good friend you can usually tell. And uh, you'll learn a lot that way. You'll become a better rounded person. You'll learn to deal with a spouse who they're going to have differences in their background. It's not a cause for war. it be a cause for exploring, figuring out what works for both of you. So, um, I can add a lot more. And uh, we do have a problem uh, nowadays with, uh, I call it, Relational and psychological perfectionism. We're not going to be perfect people, even if we do manage to make a marriage which lasts for decades, or 40 to 50 to 60, 70 years. But you learn how to deal with your own imperfections and someone else's over that time. And above all, we need to seek in our marriages to be the kind of people that the Word says that we're to be. The place for the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, um, etc. And, and self-control. There's kindness, goodness, and self-control is in our marriages. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. That's the place where the fruit of the Spirit is to be most visible. So, hope you've enjoyed this. Hope this helps. Uh, I don't... I really... 
Thank you for your time, for your attention. I really hope that this helps someone over the course of time. Uh, I don't think that anyone's going to be right with all of these right away, but uh, I hope that they do provide some feedback, some guidance, and uh, um, that if you're a man or a woman, or even if you're still very young, you're looking to put together a marriage which lasts for a lifetime. I hope this helps, because that is my wish for you. Thank you.